you know, you, you don't get that with a DVD. You, the experience we get here at Small Cinema is unique. It's truly, you know, a wonderful place. I think it's shit. <laughs> um, uh, I think it's great. You know, I think that, that clearly it's as much about creating opportunity for people to show their own films. Yeah, and that, you know, there is a, an availability of film and media technology which means that a lot more people get to make films now than in my day. Yeah, I think that it's, you know, I still think that cinema is a great place to commune and exchange ideas. It does involve a man eating a fetus on camera. Apart from that, it's, it's fun for all the family, I don't see what the well, family film. <laughs> yeah, it's a good family film. We'll let anyone come in, come in, come in, welcome come all. My name is Matthew Marsden. And until I participated in this film you're about to see, I had been living in blissful ignorance. This is my confession. Probably best if, I mean, I haven't really, if you want to ask me some questions, it's probably best if you maybe send them across before. There's so much that you can do with a camera. You can take a camera anywhere, you can get ideas from anywhere. So I don't understand why everything has to be the same and has to be rigid and within these rules. And, well, Citizen Kane's the greatest film ever because everyone says it is, but it's actually quite boring. Do you like going out with a filmmaker? Yes, I do. Yeah. What's the best thing about going out with a filmmaker? Um, well, he's like the most creative person that I've ever met in my life. So it like, kind of gets me into all that kind of thing, because I do drama myself, so it's making me more creative. Watched a hell of a lot more films since I've been with him, and it's all really interesting to see how it's done and all that kind of thing. Price me, my protector on my brain! Creativity is sexy. I mean, I've got 200 YouTube views and I'm like, I don't care because I made, I made the film, I enjoyed it, it's funny and that, but I really sure it's two million. <laughs> I can't really lie. Well, I think I have some integrity in that thing, but it's easy to have integrity when no one cares. <laughs> Some, a lot of independent cinema now is still is using the same rules as the mainstream, so I don't know. There's, there's different pockets all over the place that are good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with mainstream cinema, it's just whether it's done well. You, know, you can do something totally abstract and experimental really well or really badly, just as you can do the Avengers really well or really badly. You could make the Avengers or you could make Fantastic Four. Bernard, what a cunt. If you're not on the edge, really, you're just taking up space. They should just get out, really, unless they've got something to say. Usually when I was a teenager, when I was a kid, like, cinema was like my best friend. Um, at least there are some people looking to make films that are different. At least there are some people dedicated to their art. At least there are there are some people who want to make a creative cultural difference. Dirk from the Merc. Welcome. Welcome, Stephen. All right, there, please. Hold it, hold it. This is a secure area. Okay, proceed. Hold it there, mate. Hold it there. 
Have you got any guns, oh, yeah, grenades, yeah. or unicorns? Yes, we'll them. And with Okay, proceed. In Bristol, there was film schools, there was university students studying film, but apart from on campus, there wasn't really much of an outlet. So hence why we set it up, set up Cinemi to kind of showcase filmmakers' work, give them a chance to kind of talk about their film in front of a paying audience. At the moment, I sort of seem to be on this rampage of being against sort of mainstream cinema or commercialised Hollywood cinema. Yeah. Not because I'm a, I disapprove of it in any way, but I just kind of bore with the. They just make the same kind of. Yeah, films it, it, over today and over again. it's it's remakes, reboots, rehashes. What you know, I I think it's like Hollywood playing safe. They know that it's a ready-made audience. All they have to do is sort of like say reboot it and and then they make a buck. I mean, it's, it's like they they've remade nearly every classic horror. But there's no, like they, they remade Nightmare on Elm Street, but there were no yeah. sequels to the remake. But there were sequels to the originals because the originals are good. Well, I'm online chatting to people and oh, silly me gig. And I always call them gigs for some reason. And they'll think, oh, how, the next day someone said, how was the band last night? <laughs> no, 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 sorry, it was uh, short films. I always call them gigs for some, for some reason. I don't yeah, know why. I did. So maybe there's a musical influence. What's his name? Tony Wilson. Tony Wilson, Factory. yeah, Factory Records. And they had that club and his kind of philosophy. Yeah, was, Hacienda. Yeah, it wasn't about making money necessarily. It was about, it was about a scene and an event and, and a good time and, and, and that's it. Yeah. Friends have managed to convince you to come along and pay a tenner to watch the latest three-hour-long Hollywood blockbuster. Well, okay, it's entertaining, sort of, and the popcorn isn't too bad. But deep down, you know that cinema is so much more than this. But like films, so disposable now. There's more yeah. films being made because it's cheaper to make film. It's more accessible with the technology. But now the distributors, they never give a chance for a, a film to kind of breathe and then it's all based on opening weekend yeah, box yeah. office so if a film doesn't make enough money in that opening weekend it's out the cinema chain it doesn't give a, a film the chance to get um, you know that word of mouth if you put too much strictness and I think there is like we were talking about earlier if you put so much strictness within the arts industry and in certain ways you, you cease to have fun and people become bitter about things you've never got that wrong and he's an idiot can't stand him hate that actor i mean we, we all say this sometimes but um but then you brush, brush it off and you just keep going and have fun you know you don't give up and slip your wrist and that's it end of it i'm liam this is Noel. <laughs> wave a flag and shout hooray 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 it's nearly time for jubilee day it's, it's, it's their own it's their own deal, isn't it? If they heckle, they heckle. But uh, we're here to do a job, and and you do it. That's just the way they react. Because film technology has never been easier to access, it's bound to happen. You know, I mean, if you can get a film into a mainstream cinema that's shot on a mobile phone. That tells you an awful lot about the quality of the technology and it tells you about the immediacy with which images can be captured. Ninety percent of all the films released in, I think it was 2013-14, ninety percent of all those films were from independent and overseas filmmakers. 
10% were from the home market and from the USA, and yet that 10% took 90% of the box office, and the others had to scrabble for the crumbs. I don't quite know how, how independent filmmakers can actually carry on without the likes of film societies prepared to um, get in touch with distributors, to preview screenings, um, to put them on, and then really to work hard to attract their audience um, and, and get them in so that these films can be seen. quite interesting to see how many small cinemas are starting up. Um, I'd like to think that they represent, you know, an open-minded group of people who are prepared to be um, more ambitious in their film choices. <laughs> so easy, right? <laughs> Hines, I think it's coming for us. Oh, yeah. Are you oh my We're god! Jesus! Hey, hey. Fucking hell! Fuck, it's wild! It's get I'm getting out of here. Yeah, I'm out of here. Yes, love cinema, uh, want to do Hi, something, guys. want to be eaten by monsters. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, you think it's important? It's not true. It's an ancient order. What happened? There's people everywhere. They're everywhere outside. Where? They're eating people. They're eating people alive. See? That's what I meant. Do you believe me now? What's so good about Expo Cinema? Diversity. Now the choice and uh, the uh, spontaneity of it and uh, the beauty of it. Well, I like novelty and things that are not mainstream and looking at things from a different perspective and not getting the same old bullshit that we get on TV, Hollywood. So, hoping to see some of that tonight. What underground cinema can bring to mainstream cinema, I suppose, is um, it's grassroots, it's real, and it's, you know, people make it from their heart, because you have to. Yeah, it's, it's very punk. It is very punk. And um, actually, the people that started it off really were much more aware of a uh, first-hand of the punk scene. And I see a hunger in, the, in this generation coming up. They're a bit kind of bored of um, being spoon-fed um, a lot of things. And there, there's all this, the internet is opening up a platform for young people to find voice. It's, it's going to rejuvenate things because they're going to actually start looking at, um, looking more independently perhaps around. I have to admit to being old enough to perhaps be one of those, fit in a, an age bracket now where you start influencing the next generation and uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen to do that. I'm starting on my little one. Um, she's been <laughs> she's she's been involved since she was well since the start yeah since she was here. Uh, it's not legitimate. It's not institutional. It hasn't been validated. Um, it comes from below. So um, and that's what excites me. I don't like institutional top-down um, structures or anything. Who who are we fighting here? Um, is this a warfare? It's up to us to do what we can to change people's tastes. And Exploding Cinema is a grassroots style movement which is trying to do just that. The mainstream cinemas increasingly counter to uh, petty interest in superheroes and uh, stupid effects. Nowadays, um, they're not looking for new ideas. Now they're looking for franchises. It, it, you know, it's like Fast and Furious. What eight are we on now? You know, I mean, it's and that's not a film. You know, 
that's a franchise. We do all really believe in the principles of uh, DIY and the kind of punk kind of ethos. Um, and we stick to our guns on that. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's just something that comes natural to us. Cooking. That's it. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Okay. I, I thought maybe there is more cinema <laughs> on a on a side of a street on a, a corner. Mainly, mainly I like surrealism. I think, uh, well, it was a great movement and really inspiring for everyone. I just nurture them. I give them nurturing that the parents never gave them or the friggin' teachers never gave them. I give them the encouragement to go out there mm. and do that, you know, and hopefully by seeing these types of videos, you go out and make something yourself. That is possible. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing when I made, you know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I made my first film. Constant error. But that's, you know, that's how you learn. There's no, yeah. you're not going to, you're not going to get killed by it. Yeah. You know, you're going to become stronger. The more money you spend on a film, the, the worse the actual quality of the finished product. There's a sort of, almost an inverse relationship between the two. And it does seem to me that, that if you have less money to operate with, you have to be a lot more creative and imaginative about what you choose to do. Any more questions? No? Okay, let's move it on. Thank you. One of the most important things of this uh, episode is that the actors were found the morning of the film, of the shooting. Basically, all the people, they just uh, learned the, um, the lines during the shooting. They were amazing. I found them the morning of the shooting and everyone for five hours in that place with me and it was amazing. feels like being like high or something because you just like see the world much more differently than usual.